All right, hello everyone, it is that time. So we are happy to welcome you to MSU Federal Credit Union's Financial Education Seminar Series. We appreciate y'all joining us this night and we're happy to bring our seminar series to you virtually. Now these presentations were created with you in mind with the intention to give financial education on a number of relatable topics to help expand your knowledge of finances. Each event will be hosted by a member of our financial education department or one of our partners connecting you with resources in our community. We have a diverse number of presentations planned for you this year, and you can explore and register for this year's events by visiting us at www.msufcu.org forward slash events. This evening's event is being recorded, so if you'd like to rewatch tonight's presentation, you're able to do so from our YouTube channel or you can share the link with anyone who is unable to attend. Now we will have time after the presentation to address questions submitted to the chat, and this segment will not be recorded. You may send your inquiries at any time during the event, which will later be answered during the discussion in the order in which they were received. When sending messages, please address them to all panelists to ensure it's properly directed. And once I've obtained your question, I'll reply to acknowledge I've successfully received it. Now this evening we have an amazing guest joining us to present on how we can prepare for an interview and best practices. So allow me to introduce our host this evening, Jenner Kelly, who works here at MSU Federal Credit Union as a talent acquisition specialist. So welcome Jenner and thank you so much for joining us. I'll go ahead and pass it over to you to introduce yourself to our audience tonight. Tell us a little about your journey of becoming a part of our recruiting team at MSU FCU and what you love about working for the credit union. And then we can lead right into our presentation this evening. Wonderful. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, so thank you all. I'm so excited to present to you about some interviewing secrets revealed um, both from more of the industry, but also here maybe at the credit union as well. Um, like Lindsay said, any questions you might have, feel free to address them in the chat and we'll make sure we get to them throughout the, the presentation this evening. Um, so a little introduction um, about myself and agenda. So the agenda, we are gonna talk about um, preparing for an interview, what to do and say during an interview, as well as post-interview success. And working here at the credit union, I'll go ahead and start the introduction. Um, I am Jenner Kelly. I, of course, um, am a, a member and an employee here at the credit union, MSU FCU. My title is a talent acquisition specialist level two. I have been at the credit union for about a year and a half now. Um, I've kind of touched different areas within the credit union. I've uh, recruited for our member services, our branches, our call center, those positions that are, you know, talking with our members each and every day. But I've also recruited for some of our back office, um, HR positions, finance, risk, <laughs> you name it. I've recruited for a lot of different areas within the credit union here so far in my short one and a half years. Um, a little bit more about me, I do have, bachelor's, have a bachelor's degree in human resources and organizational leadership management. Um, and I've been in recruiting for just over 10 years or so. A lot of my industries relate more to the retail, manufacturing, or banking industries. I love my job, however, um, I've obviously been in different industries and I love changing and impacting people's lives for the better. So um, honestly, it might be just for my communication with them, my follow up, my feedback, or even making offers to, to them for potential you know, careers. It is changing their lives each and every day. And that is truly why I do what I do. So um, just a little feedback or not feedback, but update about why I love my job here at the credit union and just what I do each and every day. So I wanna go ahead and get into the first portion of tonight's presentation and that's prepping for your interview. Um, so each slide I will discuss, you know, different tips and there's multiple slides as well. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask Lindsay um, or myself in the chat. But the first step for interview preparation is knowing the company. You wanna make sure the place that you're working matches and aligns well with what you're looking for. Understanding the job, the company, the core values, the mission, 
you want to find a place that you really desire to be at and that you believe in. And so look, look at, you know, online at their website, at their social media, learn about them from behind the scenes, more or less, and find out what makes them special, what makes them unique. Um, during the interview, a lot of times recruiters and, and managers might ask you that question as like, why us? Why'd you choose us? So really learning about them. A lot of companies are posting all over social media um, and they want to post for that reason. And so people who join their teams know what it's like a day in the life, so to speak. So use those tools and those resources essentially that they're giving you and um, learn more about them from that point of view. Also read the job posting. So there's so many times I'll be doing an interview and a lot of the questions people ask could have been answered from the job posting itself. I do know job postings tend to be quite long and there's lots and lots of words and you're probably applying on your phone and trying to be really quick about it. But if you have a chance, you know, maybe save that posting for later when you're doing some prep for the interview and read really what the job's about. Grasp onto those adjectives they're using. Maybe they're saying we want a team player. And so, you know, when you're reading the job posting and you're when you're during, doing the interview and talking about yourself, maybe you want to highlight that, for example. So grasp onto those, onto those adjectives and really read the job posting and know what you're applying to. And then know yourself. Um, I know it sounds really simple, of course, but honestly, you want to make sure that what's on your resume, what you're presenting, even your little, you know, secrets that, you know, you want to talk about during the interview, you know a lot about. So your previous experience in education, a lot of times during the interview, they might ask you, you know, what prompted a change from a position or how many years were you at a certain position? And you just want to know that about yourself. And some things, when you have a lot of different jobs, those might get a little um, mixed up. So just knowing what to, what to say during those situations. Also really knowing what skills you have to bring to the table, um, both technical and soft skills, of course. So if you're applying to a job that does require certain softwares or um, certifications, know what you're sharing with the with the managers and that way when they're jotting down notes they can say yep they know this skill um and then soft skills what do you bring to the table that can't be taught um maybe it's just your communication skills maybe it's your time management what are those things that can't really be learned on the job that you think that makes you more qualified and, and more unique as well and then lastly about yourself make sure you know your growth and your goals so Maybe you want to be in that same position for years, and that's awesome. Managers love to hear that too. Don't feel like you have to say, I want to be the next CEO of a company, because a lot of managers actually aren't looking for that. They just want to know that you're going to be passionate about what you're doing each and every day, and that if you want to grow, you know what you want to grow into potentially, or being open to growing into something in the future. Be open and honest, but knowing that and not trying to sell yourself for something that you don't want is also not, not appreciated. So make sure you're being realistic and you're really setting yourself up for success. Next slide. Um, practice and interview yourself. So I don't want people to be scripted, but I do want them to maybe think about possible responses. So if someone were to ask you about your time in a position, know what you're likely going to say. Maybe write up some, some possible answers that you might want to say and practice them. Also, practice saying more complicated words or phrases, especially if they pertain to a certain position. I'll be honest, I'm not the greatest at speaking with my vocabulary, but practice makes perfect and it helps really that interview go a little bit better. Because once you stumble on one word, you feel like you're gonna stumble on the rest of them. And then look in a mirror and record yourself as you speak. Some people speak very, very fast. Others speak a little slower. Others, um, maybe they make weird facial expressions when they speak and they didn't really know it. So always try, just try to record yourself. Um, I do it with no one watching, especially just because I am more self-conscious like that. But just look at yourself and, and listen to yourself speak and figure out if maybe you are saying things too quickly, how do you slow down? How do you take a breath and make that conversation a little, little bit more understandable? Dress for the job you want. 
I think this is a big question that people typically have is, what should I wear to an interview? Now, I do suggest looking at social media or even some photos on social media that employees are tagged in. You might see a, a typical day at the office. However, you might see a more casual look. Maybe the photos that they're getting tagged in are from volunteer events and that's not your typical dress. Um, maybe it's something you know more on the employee event side and they obviously were dressed a certain way. So if you want a straightforward answer, I'd say steer clear of jeans, sweatshirts, plain or graphic tees, tennis shoes and beach sandals. Those are just way too casual for most environments and most jobs. And even if you overdress, it's better than underdressing. So if you're looking to, to, to wear something, I always suggest a nice pair of dress pants, um, a nice shirt, blouse, polo, et cetera. Um, and then open-toed shoes are one of those things that I think could go for some positions, but if you are gonna wear open-toed shoes, just make sure you have manicured feet, toes, um, and maybe you're wearing some sort of like pantyhose or something as well. Um, it's never, never a no-no that you don't have to wear that, but I would suggest to maybe wear, you know, closed-toed shoes as well. If you are interviewing for maybe like a manager or an executive position, I'd say level up your outfit a little bit. Um, those positions, they tend to look for more of like that, that suit jacket blazer type of look. Um, so level up a little bit, look your best regardless, whatever you feel your best in, you're going to look your best in then. So as long as you're happy, you're confident, then that confidence really just makes the interview even better. So as long as you are wearing what you like to wear, then your interview will go great. And then check your resume. So make sure you're checking for spelling, grammar, make sure you have the right contact information. I have seen a lot of resumes where their number is incorrect, just transposed. Um, maybe their email is incorrect and a number or letter is added and we can't get a hold of them, unfortunately, and we want to. So I would always suggest to have someone look at your resume again, make sure that things are spelled correctly. Um, you're capitalizing like the letter I, for example, different words that need to be capitalized, um, as well as making sure that accurate contact information is on there. And that way you get a call back or an email back as well. Um, also make sure your most recent positions are listed and accurate. Um, sometimes when you apply for a position, you're able to make an application and submit a resume. Sometimes on the application though, that might be your most recent position, but you never updated the resume. That resume is actually the document that gets sent forward to um, different hiring teams. <laughs> so you want that resume to be the most accurate that you can be because that is what's going to follow you throughout this process. So if you have a position that ended recently, write that it's ended recently. We want it to be accurate because if we have an, a conversation and it says you're still there, we're gonna think you're still there. So it, it's better to be more accurate than to um, show that you, or to, to be accurate than to not show that you're currently at a place. So um, I always do suggest to attend resume workshops to get some free advice or to, en to enhance your resume. A lot of colleges and university clubs and organizations put these on for the community. Um, also, I know our local like Michigan Works, for example, they usually have some people there that can help you write a resume completely free. So if you want to look into those, I always suggest that because that's something that's going to help you for a long time, not just in the moment, but for future years to come. You'll learn wonderful skills to create the best resume and create um, the best document that can be edited for years to come from those different workshops and seminars. I want to take a brief pause, brief pause and see if Lindsay has any questions coming through the chat that we should be looking at. I don't have any questions as of right now, but if anyone has any, again, during the event, we invite you to submit those as we go. Um, Jenner will be pausing for questions as we go throughout this evening, um, but we will also have time for questions at the end. So if you think of something that she went over previously this evening and we're already toward the end, 
just feel free to jot it down or you can submit it in the chat. We'll be happy to still ask and answer your question. Thank you. The next phase in our prep and our interview secrets is talking about what happens during the interview. I'm going to walk you through, you know, a typical interview and some things to think about. So one is introducing yourself. Walk into that interview with confidence. Again, confidence is going to make that interview go really well for you. So make sure you have a smile on your face. You're showing them that you know what you know. You're amazing and you want this job and deserve this job. So have that confidence. Introduce yourself. Um, maybe offer your hand to shake. And I say maybe because I know right now with um, sometimes with germs, not everyone wants to shake hands and that's okay. But maybe let people know that, I, you know, just to be cautious, I'm not going to shake your hand because that just shows that you're respecting them still. And you're just, you, do, you don't want to, to introduce those to them um, rather than just not even saying anything. That's actually going to be a little bit off if you don't say anything. So just either offer to shake their hand or just let them know that, you know, today you're not shaking hands and that's okay. Bring resumes with you. Um, I say resumes with a, an S, plural, because you usually will be interviewing with many people and you don't want them all like, you know, looking at one resume at once. So just bring a couple of resumes with you, um, usually enough for each hiring team member. If you don't know how many people are going to be attending and you have not found out prior to the interview, I say print at least three copies. Um, if Chances are it's at least two people that are interviewing with you. So they each get a copy, you get a copy, and that is easy to, to look at. Um, so I'd say print out three, three copies of your resume. Bring notes and a pen or paper. Um, it's okay to refer back to your notes. I think a lot of people think that like, they don't, we don't want to see, they don't want to see me sweat. I can't look at notes. I can't, can't look back and like try to reference things. No, I'd rather have someone reference their notes that they took because they researched our company rather than sitting there acting like they know everything and they don't know everything. So definitely take notes, bring your notes. Um, it's okay. It's we're on, on our end. We're actually jotting down notes as well. So there is that time for those brief pauses to quickly write down a note. Um, it's okay for interviews to have brief pauses and, and such. I always call them awkward little pauses and, and laugh about it and everyone always understands. So don't feel free or don't feel, be afraid and feel free to take those notes as well. Another part of the interview a lot of people I think stumble on is the strengths and weaknesses questions. I can see how nerve wracking that is <laughs> to be asked about your strengths and weaknesses. So let's talk about them a little bit more. For your strengths, I always suggest to think of three strengths of yours per interview to try to showcase. And I say per interview because typically from interview one to two, that recruiter, that manager might be writing down those strengths and sharing them with the next group of people. And so you kind of want to show that, you know, you have lots of strengths, of course. We all love to talk about ourselves. So definitely write some strengths per interview. And then use examples to show off these strengths when answering your questions. So an interviewer may not ask you, what are your strengths? They might ask you about, give me an example when you did this. And to show them that you have amazing qualities, because we all know you do, try to use an example by saying, you know, because I am really I have great time management skills, I was able to do X, Y, and Z. And then they're going to write that down that so and so is really great at time management. And it really just helps them remember those different things about you. If you need help thinking about what strengths to highlight, go back to the job posting. See what they're asking for in their job posting. It might spark some some memories and you're like, you know what? I am really good at that. Why not just try to show the company that you have all those skills that they're looking for? So um, I always say go back to that job posting and just see what you can pull from it that really sparks that that memory for what you what you have to bring to the table. Now weaknesses. Not everyone likes to show that they have a weakness, but we're all human. We all make mistakes. We all have weaknesses. And honestly, if someone tells me that they don't have a weakness, I'm going to think that's more of a red flag when it comes to an interview because we all have things we can work on and improve. So that's what I, my suggestion is, is to think about those different weaknesses that you are working on. 
it's a positive more than anything else showing that you are taking the initiative you have the drive to change and and you're working on things that is what i like to see in interviews and i know other people do as well so take those weaknesses turn them a bit to being more of a a work in progress and that will really give you um, that next interview pretty much so then i want to talk about you know some of those questions so asking thoughtful questions in the interview before the interview write a list of the things you want to know about your future employer because we're going to get the job right you're going to be hired so your future employer the position itself the team dynamics you know maybe they have coffee chats or breaks and you you know that's really important to you um a day in the life so it could be from you know what does the morning look like what's the afternoon look like or what is the scope of the position from month to month um, or the future of the position. I know lately, um, sometimes companies are laying off and you wanna make sure that you have job security. So what does that position look like three months, six months, three years, six years, et cetera, down the road? As we're going through the interview, start checking those things off. Like, yep, they answered that. Yep, I asked that. And then that way, all your questions are being answered throughout the interview. I would say come to the interview with at least five questions because likely three of them will be answered before you even get to the question and answered session um, and come to the interview with at least one question that they probably won't answer. Um, I love to hear that candidates have a lot of questions for us or at least one. It could be very, very unique. It could be something that you saw on their social media when you're doing research, whatever it might be. When you ask those questions, recruiters and managers really find that thoughtful. They appreciate it. So um, you took the time to find more questions. So make sure you, you always come prepared with a couple extra questions. And then part of questions are also getting those important details answered because these happen to be a lot of questions that people get. So um, compensation and benefits. Know your worth, do your market research, be prepared to talk about compensation and benefits during that interview session. You don't have to um, know the ins and the outs of the market, but at least know what you, you feel this position should be getting paid as also as a why too. like I, I want to be making X dollars per hour because I see other companies also hiring at that amount. And then that will open up the doors for more conversation with that company. I would say it does tend to be a little bit of a, what I call a yellow flag if companies aren't willing to talk about that at the time of interview. It might be the first interview or the last interview, but if you have not yet talked about compensation and benefits with them, that to me is a, a yellow flag. So just know, know your worth, know that what, what you um, can bring up during the interview, it's okay to ask about those very specific, sometimes you know sensitive details as well. So then next, I want to transition to after the interview what to chat about, what to talk about, um, how to prepare for after the interview as well. So the first thing is following up with the recruiter. I'll be honest, you know, being in this industry, sending a, a handwritten or an email, it won't really improve your chances of getting hired. I know a lot of people think it does. Unfortunately, it doesn't. But it does make that recruiter, that talent acquisition specialist, that HR who, representative feel so appreciated and they it leaves a, such a great taste in their mouth for you. So even though it may not get you the job, it might get you a job down the line with them. Just think about that. It's, it's more for the future at this company. Um, I also don't suggest sending like the handwritten cards. A lot of recruiters actually are working remotely now. And so it might take a little bit longer to get to them. So if you're trying to send something quicker, I always suggest an email. I know not everyone always emails. So if you want to do a handwritten card, you're more than welcome to. Just understand it might take a bit more time to get to that recruiter. So don't feel like they're going to get it the next day necessarily. Practice patience. I will say this time and time again that it takes time. The process takes time. Sometimes people get hired same day, next day, et cetera. 
a lot of times there's a lot of people in the process, um, whether it's there's a lot of just interviewers, need more opinions, you know, you need to ask for feedback, or there might be a lot of candidates that, you know, the team is sifting through and working through, um, or there might be some internal movement possibly that they have to figure out first. Understand that every team is probably working as fast as they can to get you through the process. So just have that patience, take a breath, understand that they, if they want you, they'll reach out to you. I promise. <laughs> we we don't want candidates to to um to be lost in the process. So they will definitely reach out to you once they're ready for that next step. I would suggest after an interview to potentially limit yourself to two interactions with the company for that follow up. So my first one is suggestion is for whatever time frame that recruiter or manager suggested. Maybe they said, you know. We'll have an answer by the end of the week or early next week. Maybe they gave you a, a certain date. Whatever that is, just add one. So if they said you'll know by Thursday, say Friday, I'll reach out to you. If they say by the end of the week, follow up the following or first of the following week. That way it gives them a little bit of a buffer. Under, again, understand it takes time, have that patience. But you're not um, asking too soon for feedback, but you're also not like waiting weeks and weeks and weeks for feedback. You're really just asking you know, them to follow through with what they told you. The second interaction, and sometimes the final interaction is typically about a week and a half, maybe even two weeks later. Just a follow up saying, you know, I really appreciate your time. I'm just curious if you have any feedback you can provide me about the position. If not, that's perfectly fine. I thank you for your time. You know, simple as that. That way, um, if they aren't moving forward with you, that might be a good time to get some feedback as to why. And if they are, or they're just waiting on things, they can also give you some feedback, but you give them en enough time to figure that out. So that would be my two suggestions for interactions with the company. Um, and then lastly, after the interview, it is okay not to be selected. I know how hard it is to be rejected. It's not fun. It's never, I, everyone's been rejected in their life and it's, it's never gets better, but it does not mean you did not do well. Just keep that in mind. Honestly, I've hired so many people and I've rejected so many people, unfortunately. And usually the people rejected are only because we found a person who closely fit what we needed a little bit more or a little bit quicker or whatever it is. It's not about you personally as a candidate. So just keep that in mind. If you get a rejection, it's okay. You'll move on, keep on breathing. It does not mean the company doesn't like you. Um, it would, if it is appropriate, like, so if you are rejected and they did not give you a reasoning why, you're more than welcome to ask for some feedback in, during one of your interactions, you know, just curious why I was not selected. I would love to improve on those different things of why I'm not selected, but please be polite. Don't leave a bad reputation. Usually the person who is giving you that feedback is not the one who made the decision. So keep that in mind. The recruiters are kind of the messengers sometimes in this process. So if that person's giving you feedback, just be nice to them, you know, in, in this process. It's actually gonna probably help you in the future at that company because they're gonna remember that one time so-and-so was really nice to them and understood, you know, that the the feedback there was not exactly what that person wanted to hear. So at this time, another brief pause. Um, I'm sure questions are probably going to happen more at the end, but just wanted to check in with Lindsay to see if any questions are coming through the chat. Yeah, thanks, Jenner. Um, we did have one question wondering, let me go through. We've had a pretty active chat this evening, so that's been super awesome. Um, but this person has asked, do you have any tips for a virtual specific interview? Are there do's and don'ts? Um, do we need a virtual background, right? Um, or do you have any other pointers or suggestions? Because I know that a lot of companies are maybe entertaining those more often now just because they're um, a little bit more user friendly or convenient, but what can you share with us? Yeah, it's a great question. You are completely right, virtual interviews are happening so frequently, they're actually here to stay. I think they've realized a lot of our workforce, they're working Monday through Friday, eight to five, and it's hard to get out of work to do an interview. And so they are becoming more accommodating and offering virtual interviews, which is awesome. So some suggestions, 
no, you don't need a virtual background. If a company is offering you a virtual interview, they should understand that you're probably going to be doing it in a different space than what you would call your normal office. Um, I know a lot of people I've interviewed and they are in their living room and you can see kids toys in the background and that's perfectly okay. I would say if you are looking for more of like a VP or a executive type of position, maybe find a, a quiet area in your house or in a, a, a coffee house or something that has like a nice background, just because you're probably meeting with like CEOs and VPs. But honestly, I've never done an interview like that myself, so I can't attest to it, but I'm sure that they'd want to see a little bit probably, you know, more professional setting. Most most interviews and most positions, though, those managers and recruiters are going to understand that you're probably not in your typical space. Um, if you're in the car, sometimes it's nice just to to let them know ahead of time that I am parked. You know, I'm just so you know, I'm not like distracted, distracted driving. I would say and most people under assume that, but it's always nice to still let you know that I'm just sitting here in my car in a parking lot. Um, possibly apologize for any background noise or interference or ask if you have any anything that they, they can hear like is the, is the sound okay you know whatever that might look like so definitely um just kind of preface it but there's no need to try to spend money and have this beautiful setup just for a virtual interview awesome thanks jenner and if anything else comes to mind um as we're thinking about uh virtual interviews, things like that, folks, please feel free to ask those more specific questions and I'll be sure to pose those as well to Jenner. Um, our other question tonight is, do you have any suggestions on trainings or gaining knowledge on working in a financial institution for someone that doesn't have any prior experience in that setting? Great question as well. So, it does depend on the position itself. If you're looking for more of like a working at a branch or in the call center or, you know, working with our members or our customers, I would say, first of all, apply for the job because that position itself is not one that you need previous experience for. So that's one is apply to the job because you'll actually be more than likely qualified. Um, but as far as suggestions on trainings or gaining more knowledge, one is you can ask, um, you know, go to the branch or call into the call center, whatever you're looking at and ask some questions about, you know, different product services day in the life of the position. I would suggest probably going into one of those branches first because those um, individuals might have a bit more time on their schedule, whereas the call centers sometimes it's um, a little bit faster paced. So go in and ask those questions about what each day looks like. Um, and then there are different like webinars. There's different things you can look up online um, as far as like what is the day or typical day in a banking setting um, and just trying to get a little bit of knowledge there. But I guess my, my, my main suggestion is don't be afraid to apply to those positions. I've actually seen all over from family to friends to uh, our community just saying like, oh, I can't work there. I don't know anything about banking. I, I'm, I'm bad at math and that's not the case at all. We have computers that do all the, the, the calculations, which is awesome. Um, and it's more about having that customer service attitude. So uh, just making sure that you're there to help out customers and members and, and letting them know that you're, you're here to assist them. If you show that in an interview, they, those managers will know that they can get you to the next step. They can help you soar into that amazing branch representative that you might be. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jenner. And I agree, like really just putting yourself out there to see, you know, what that looks like, no matter your background. And then, I mean, think of it too, like you all are coming here and attending this webinar. I mean, that is really like an, another great step just to learn about what banks and credit unions might offer outside or give you an idea for something that you might be interested in doing as well. And I'll be sure to share some additional resources just about getting more in the know about, you know, different financial topics related to credit or um, budgeting, things like that too. So stay tuned and we'll, we'll be discussing that shortly. Um, but if anyone has any more questions related to um, more specific jobs, things like that, um, we'll be happy to uh, address those toward our unrecorded portion of the event as well. And that's all we have as of right now, Jenner. So I'll let you go ahead and, and continue on. Thank you and great questions.
So I did want to cover some statistics and feedback or, or facts and sorry that just kind of show, you know, how today's day and age, what interviews look like, what the market looks like. Um, there are a tons and tons and tons of stats that you can find online if you're really looking for some sp specifics potentially. Um, but these are just things that I really that that pop out to me as more of the recruiter, as well as a you know, a former job seeker, what I would love to know if someone were to tell me that this was going on um, before. So one is online job interviews and virtual interviews. Like I kind of just mentioned in that, that answer um, two questions ago is they are here to stay. So online or virtual job interviews increased 49% in the last 12 years. That's crazy. That's amazing. Um, I love it because again, it, it does help our candidates, our, our population, our community do interviews when maybe they don't have PTO to take time off and they have to do it on their lunch break or they are living in somewhere else and they want to interview and apply to a job three states over. It really helps create a barrier free type of interview process. So if you are not familiar with virtual interviews or online interviews, please try to brush up on some of that, that um, knowledge and, and understand that that might be a way of the future. It's not a negative, it is a positive because we are looking for more barrier free options of interviewing people and making sure they don't have to be inconvenienced. Childcare, taking time off, um, gas <laughs> nowadays, you know, you don't want to, you want people to, to have that option to interview without having to, to spend extra money or time or um, move things around if they don't have to. I found it so interesting to see that 82% of hiring managers still conduct virtual interviews, even um, from the start of the pandemic until now. So it, it's really amazing to see the past three years how we are still doing those virtual interviews. Um, I know in my position itself, I've been here for a year and a half. I've conducted maybe three on-site interviews. <laughs> and that, you know, it, it's just because we are doing WebEx all the time and it's amazing. So. If you ever need assistance with trying to figure out how to do a virtual or WebEx or a Zoom interview, um, look online, reach out to our, our teams here. We can definitely give you some assistance when it comes to that. Um, as far as in-person interviews, they do last on average about 45 to 90 minutes. So I, I don't want you to, to think that interviews are always gonna be super quick or always gonna be super, super long. Sometimes they're in that sweet spot of, of about an hour, you know, maybe a little bit over, a little bit under. I will though say some interviews, especially for those more entry level positions, or if you're doing additional interviews, those might be a little bit shorter and that's okay. If your interview only lasts 30 minutes, don't think you didn't get the job. <laughs> Understand that some interviews are gonna be shorter because Maybe there's less questions that need to be asked, or it might be an additional interview that a lot of questions have already been answered as well. 27% of recruiters see typos or poor grammar as deal breakers. As I mentioned with the, res the resume comment earlier is that resume lives with you. It follows you through the process. So if you are writing a resume, make sure, have another set of eyes look at it, make sure it looks good. Um, there's no poor, poor grammar or typos. You don't have to be a professional writing um, individual to make an amazing resume. You can write it how you normally write it. Just spell check it is my main suggestion. Um, and then 35% also feel kind of the same about unprofessional email addresses. I have an email address when I was a teenager that I retired because it was not, it's not representative of who I am today. So just if you are looking for jobs, maybe try to make a professional email address. A lot of our inboxes or email servers allow you to have multiple email addresses. So just think about one, a lot of times your first, not your last name, plus your favorite number will likely work for, for a lot of people. If you have a very common name, you might have to add a couple more numbers or, or such to the email, um, but that is very professional. If I'm looking at that as a recruiter, I can say that name matches with this email so that that email is likely correct. Um, if you're spelling your name wrong in your email, because you want to be, you, you want that unique type of email, it's going to make me worried as a recruiter that that email address is not right then because the name is spelled wrong. So just keep that in mind too when you're creating more of a professional email address, make sure that it matches, it looks good with, if your name is in there that it's spelled correctly as well. 
<clears throat> on average, 47% of candidates are rejected because they had a vague idea of the job role and what the company does. Um, I can say this is probably very, very true, just given my own personal <laughs> experience too, is we wanna make sure who we're hiring has a passion to be here or understanding of what job they're applying to. It could be as simple as just finding out one core value about that company, and that could be all you know, and that is going to push you forward. So do even just five minutes of research, that is going to really push you forward to the next step because they're going to think that you have that passion or know that you have that passion, I should say. Um, the average length of the job interview process is 23.8 days. That seems like a long time, especially when you're looking for a position. That's you know, what about just over three weeks of waiting for people to get back to you to do interviews before you even get an offer. But that is pretty average. Um, a lot of times it's actually longer too, if you have multiple interviews or multiple people involved. So when I said practice patience in the follow up, this is where you need to practice that patience. This is why um, a lot of interviews are taking a bit longer especially if you need to have many people in the interview process. So if you um, are seeing things taking, you know, around the, the month long timeframe, it's okay. Don't be too worried or, or alarmed. And then this one, I, I, this last fact I really like, it's only 20% of applicants get to that, the interview round. And I like that fact for the fact of, um, when you are selected to go to an interview, just remember how exclusive it is. <laughs> like you are one of, you're 20% of the applicants basically that are you're moving to the next round and so that means they really do like you um one in five basically people they like you they want you to move forward and so think about that as su such a success and like use that to build your confidence like I did it <laughs> I moved on to the next round and they like me and so I really like that fact for that reason is just it helps build that success or that not that success that confidence that you are amazing and they believe in you so just remember that when you are moving on in, in interview processes so in summary um before i talk about msu fcu of course in summary if i could just think about four specific things is one do your research for the company and the job before you apply they will find that you're so passionate about it they want to move you forward Two is to update your resume and documents to be the most accurate. Again, that resume or that cover letter is a living document that stays with you as you move through the process. So you want, you don't want to have to keep explaining why it's not accurate. Just make it accurate, first of all, and then you'll be good. Three is asking those thoughtful questions during the process. They, again, will find your passion. They'll realize how interested you are in the position, and that will really help put you ahead of others. And then four is have that patience once once the interview is completed. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes there's other things in the background, especially around the holidays. Always be very patient because there's a lot of people on PTO typically around the holidays and it is very difficult to get some feedback. So just remember to have some patience and that patience will really help you in the long run as well. So I do want to kind of talk a little bit about MSU FCU, of course. So with Lindsay and I both working there, we'd love to highlight MSU FCU as much as possible. Um, it's amazing to work here. So we're going to do a little bit, talk a couple slides about that, and then of course have more question and answer que session at the end. First of all, we are hiring. <laughs> um, if you have never seen any of our advertisements, we are looking for amazing people to join our workplace. Um, we are a very stable and dependable company. I like to point that out because I know right now it's, it's, it's uncertain for a lot of companies, but we are here, we're growing. We added, I think at least 200 new people <laughs> to their workforce last year um, on top of just normal people that we've had uh, um, for our, our normal headcount. So we are growing, we're, we're amazing. We have wonderful benefits, um, company paid health insurance, which you're actually eligible on your first day of employment. So there's no waiting period up to 26 days of PTO each year that you can roll over year after year up to 150 days. We have a 401k that has a two to one match. So for every dollar you contribute, we put $2 in for you. <laughs> so you're gonna save for your retirement, which is awesome. Um, we are a financial institution, so we want you to save for your retirement. 
And um, with that, it's almost an immediate company match too. So it's usually within the first 30 days that you start, you can start adding to your 401k and we'll start matching as well. And then we also have 12 weeks of paid parental leave. So that's for both parents <laughs> that you can take off 12 weeks paid to take, take care of your little one if you have a little one um, or foster or adopt as well. Some normal areas that we hire for throughout any given year and especially right now, finance is huge. That includes mortgages, it includes lending, um, accounting, we also have risk management, which there's a ton of things that are under risk, but within, within risk, we have like our infrastructure planning and facilities department. Um, for example, we have member solutions and member services, branches, call center, IT, software development. So if you find yourself liking to help others, you're gonna look at the member solutions, member services. If you find yourself kind of tech savvy and liking to fix things, maybe the IT, IT software development or our infrastructure planning and facilities, we call IPF um, department possibly. If you're really analytical, more of that finance, that risk side, those are different areas that you'll be really interested in as well. And then here's a couple of things, you know, how to get a hold of us. You can apply online. Also, the QR code will take you to our, our website or applications. You can also email our TA team with some questions. So if you want to email us at careers at msufcu.org, that will go to our TA team. And we look at that inbox every single day throughout the day. So if you have any questions, you can definitely ask us some there. And then we tend to be at a lot of local events. Um, Lansing 501, for example, is pretty local to the Lansing area but we also have a lot of career fairs. We partner up with MSU and Oakland University. So you'll usually find us at most of those career fairs um, or events, but also places in Grand Rapids, Traverse City, Metro Detroit. We tend to be all across the state of Michigan for, for those types of events that you know um, promote hiring. I think this is the final slide of any other questions before we unre stop recording the, the presentation. Awesome, and I just want to say too, thank you, Jenner, so much for sharing all of this information with us this evening. This was super fabulous, and I, I think really helpful for all of us who attended. I mean, I know that I learned something new. Even um, just gonna say, I'm that person that didn't think it was okay to necessarily bring up compensation and benefits during an interview. So now we know that that might be something that you know we can feel more confident in asking about during. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much. This was super fabulous. And then also to those of you who are not staying for the discussion portion of the event, I do invite you to take the survey that will automatically open at the close so that we can consider your feedback. And then don't forget we have a couple of upcoming events, including networking like a pro. That is going to take place on Tuesday, February 14th. Yes, that will be a recorded event. I know it's on Valentine's Day. Um, so if you'd like to go back and rewatch that, if you have made plans, do feel free to do so. Again, that'll be on our YouTube channel under our seminar series playlists. But we also have Fortifying Your Financial Future taking place on Wednesday, February 15th. So again, you can find any um, of these events and many more at msufcu.org forward slash events. Um, again, if you would like to explore and apply for open positions at MSU Federal Credit Union, you can visit our website at msufcu.org forward slash careers. And you can also email us at careers at msufcu.org. And to connect with an HR representative at the credit union, you can call us at 517-333-2424, extension 6898. And I will be putting all of that information in the chat in case anyone is interested. But that being said, we're going to go ahead and stop recording and um, address any questions that have been submitted to the chat. As a reminder, we are going to be answering those in, those in the order in which we received them. Um, so please be patient with us as we address those. But I uh, just wanted to say one more time, thank you everyone so much for being here. We appreciate you being in attendance tonight.